This show is brought to you by Rotary International. Service above self. Heute ist Ahorn TV wieder für Sie unterwegs. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe von Ahorn TV, diesmal aus Banff. Richtig gehört Banff in den Rocky Mountains, direkt neben dem National Park, einem der meistbesuchten Parks auf der ganzen Welt. Wir werden hier aber weniger uns der Natur widmen als vielmehr den Medien. Hier ist in den nächsten Tagen das Banff Media Festival. Also, wie sehen die Medien derzeit aus? Wie werden sie in der Zukunft aussehen? Diesen Fragen wollen wir uns widmen. Wir wollen Prominenz aus der ganzen Welt begegnen, die dieser Branche beiwohnen. Und das Ganze findet hinter mir in dem berühmten Banff Fairmont Springs Hotel statt. Dort werden wir also die nächsten Tage verbringen. Und was wir dort also alles erfahren und erleben, das sehen Sie jetzt. Ich stehe jetzt hier tatsächlich zusammen mit Steffi Warnatsch Abra vom Kinderkanal. Ja, wer hätte das gedacht? Hier in Benf treffen wir also wieder zusammen, wir Deutschen kann man so sagen. Aber jetzt habe ich doch erstmal eine Frage. Was zieht denn den Kinderkanal nach Benf? Äh, na, die Rocky Awards ziehen uns oder holen uns hierher. Ähm, und da gibt es auch eine ganz konkrete Nominierung, habe ich gehört, ne? Richtig. Äh, und wir sind nicht nur nominiert, sondern wir haben ihn bekommen, den Rocky. Glückwunsch. <lacht> danke, danke. Äh, für unser Magazin Erde in Zukunft und zwar in der Kategorie äh, Best Children Program Nonfiction. Ja. Wow, und äh, wovon handelt das genau? Also Erde in Zukunft ist ein Magazin, recht kurz, nur zehn Minuten. Es wird wöchentlich ausgestrahlt und es geht um das große Gebiet Zukunft und Nachhaltigkeit. Und die Folge, die äh, hier nominiert wurde und gewonnen hat, äh, heißt Schnitzel ohne Schnitzel. Äh, und es geht darum... Schnitzel without Schnitzel hat man das übersetzt. <lacht> und es geht darum, ja, unser, un, äh, über unseren Fleischkonsum, dass wir eigentlich alle viel zu viel Fleisch essen. Und wir wollen den Kindern so ein bisschen erklären, was bedeutet das? Nicht für die Gesundheit, für jeden Einzelnen, sondern eher für unsere Umwelt, für die Welt insgesamt. Wir wollen jetzt allerdings nicht sagen, esst kein Fleisch mehr, weil das ist ungesund und die Nahrungsmittel wären knapp, sondern auf eine eher lustige, unterhaltsame Weise wollen wir erklären die Zusammenhänge dahinter. Okay, äh, ja, wenn man schon mal so eine Geschäftsreise unternehmen darf, schaut man sich dann noch ein bisschen mehr an oder ist es wirklich jetzt nur drei Tage Banff Media Festival und ab zurück nach Erfurt? Also ich will unbedingt noch ein bisschen rumgucken und ein bisschen wandern oder, oder zumindest spazieren gehen, weil die Berge sind einfach toll. Ich bin das erste Mal in Kanada. Äh, ich muss für meine Kinder unbedingt das einkaufen, die schreien alle schon, bringen was mit. <lacht> Und äh, ja, aber ansonsten, morgen gibt es noch eine ganze Menge äh, Termine hier rund um Kids Animation. Da wollte ich mir ein paar Sachen noch anschauen. Ja, wir freuen uns drauf. Ganz herzlichen Dank für dieses Interview. Und äh, ja, wir schauen, was wir sonst noch alles entdecken hier in Bern. You don't, you don't say German, right? I wish I did. <laughs> Deutschland, that's all about it. Yeah. That's, did you record that one? That's the only thing, <laughs> that's the only thing I can say. <laughs> you, you know that one from the soccer? Uh, obviously, yeah, obviously. Yeah. No, I, I, I've, I've picked up a few words from Heidi Klum. Don't say anything, it's embarrassing. <laughs> so, so if you don't know with whom I'm sitting here, this is Arisa Cox. And you are and you are now the newest show on uh, in Canada, which That's is Big right. Brother. Right, Big Brother Canada. Finally, we got our own version. After I think the United States is going into their 15th season in a week or so, yeah. um, and of course it's been around the world and in Europe for years and years and years. Um, we're so grateful to have had such a great experience. It was the number one reality specialty show uh, in Canada. It was a huge success. We had millions of viewers, um, and it was a big. It was a big deal for us to finally get our own version and, if I might say so myself, I think it might be better than the American version. 
Don't tell anyone I said that. You mean with more, um, I would say, uh, maybe, maybe more intelligent casting? I think, I won't go that far because I don't <laughs> want to get shot. Um, but no, I think um, because Canada is sort of newer to the, the reality genre than, say, the States, I think people are pretty exhausted there. I think in Canada you can get real people who are firefighters and dairy farmers and teachers, whereas in the States it's kind of hard not to get bartenders and actors and it's you know that's who floods their casting calls so in Canada we could get some really really great people now be before we get to the whole Canadian side um, wh where do you come from me um, I'm born and raised in Toronto mm -hmm. Ontario Canada mm -hmm. uh, my my background is Trinidadian mm -hmm. um, I went to a performing arts school then I did a journalism degree um, and I've been working in news and entertainment and reality for many many years now um, but my first big break was on a reality show myself I actually lived on camera for a year mm -hmm. when I was 22 years old uh, for a show called The Lofters. It's not around anymore. It was more like big, uh, yeah, more like real world, so it wasn't a competition. But um, I think when it came to Big Brother, it gave me a real sense of, well, empathy too. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. one, I kind of understood what that was like so I could talk to uh, the house guests on a different level. But the other thing is, I'm not gonna sit down and watch them. I would never do that. How could you? You're crazy. Yeah. I couldn't do that and sit up in my ivory tower. I was one of them. And so I feel for them more than maybe someone else would. But I mean, uh, but you only have observed them, right? That's right. Right. You were not in the house. I was not in the house. I so, spent uh, just a little bit of time with them every week on on yeah. camera. Yeah. So, so isn't that kind of strange? You you watch the Big Brother members of the house like like a laboratory, like in a laboratory, right? I know, and that's kind of how I feel. But that's on one level. On the other level, I feel like they're my friends, mm -hmm. because if you watch the live feeds, and in Canada, all the live feeds were free, so you won't believe how many people were watching at night and feeling like they were hanging out with these people and so even though I did feel a little bit like an evil mastermind, like yeah. an evil genius watching yeah. them uh, and giving them crazy challenges and twists and watching them roll with it, at the same time I kind of felt like they were friends so when they were all out and after the crazy finale we had and we were at the rap party, I was afraid I was going to look at them like, oh my gosh, I think they're my friends but they're really not my friends. But they were looking at me like that even though mm -hmm. I spent so such a uh, small amount of time with them they really felt like they had a connection to me too. So that was kind of wonderful about it. And, and it's Canada, so people aren't really out there like wanting to stab each other. I mean, generally people are pretty polite and lovely. So we didn't follow the whole last show. I mean, I, I just didn't have the time. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna tell you about the finale, okay? okay? Great, because great. the finale was possibly one yeah. of the most exciting season finales yeah. of all time, <laughs> okay. of any show, let alone reality shows, so. <laughs> So it was down to two participants, one uh, um, a very pretty teacher from Nova Scotia and the other a very flamboyant gay character that everyone called Gary Glitter from Toronto, 21 years old. Like so the musician, down, Gary Glitter. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. but just yeah. over the top, glitter, right? Yeah. Just beautiful glitter everywhere. Um, so it was down to these two. So at the, at the end, you know, the, the jury votes for who is going to, uh, who's going to win at this point. So it was going to be a tight vote. It was obvious it was going to be a tight vote. It was going to be a 5-4 vote. Wow. Five four, wow. so I'm reading. I'm reading the the votes. I'm reading the votes. Wait a second. One of Gary Glitter's biggest fans, his best friend in the house, made a mistake. She voted for the wrong person because all throughout the game, you vote for the person you want to kick out. Exactly. She was so angry at Jillian, the girl. She just would. She had her little attitude to the camera, and she made a mistake. So she instead voted for her arch enemy. You're kidding. Her best friend loses the game. She loses him $80,000 basically and gives it to her worst enemy. Yeah. I read them out, she puts her hand up. She says, no, that's a mistake. You guys are cheating. No. I want a do-over. She gets up, leaves the jury box, comes over, looks at me in my yeah. eyes like yeah. this. Yeah. Arissa, don't do this to me. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. We couldn't redo anything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the show. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, so exactly. that, it was a very dramatic moment. A lot of people thought she was going to hit me. <laughs> I knew she wasn't going to hit me. Yeah. But uh, as it was happening, just my it's brain... There's money in the now, game. I mean, absolutely. There's a lot of money. Yeah, my absolutely. earpiece was out. <laughs> I had no idea what was happening. All I knew is that we videotaped everyone voting. So we were able to go to commercial. We came back. We showed her the videotape of her making the mistake. And that's just what it was. It so was she, pretty incredible. They're obviously no friends anymore. 
Um, they, can't might, do that they might be having some problems as far. I mean, luckily it was him and he was never in it for the money. He was in it to be him and, and be inspiring to young girls, boys and girly boys, you know, around the world. That was his main thing. So he, uh, he, he accepted it with grace, but not everyone would have. Wow. Absolutely. And now when you compare it to, to Europe, in Europe, the situation is that after the first season, Big Brother start to drop off. What do you gonna do, or what have you in mind, or your your bosses, if, whatever you can tell us. To yeah, to keep it, it fresh. fresh. I mean, I mean, not to let it drop off. I mean, you have en enough examples. Yeah. No, absolutely. And we've got. Uh, there's lots of um, big, you know, American shows that come to Canada, and they last for two seasons, mm -hmm. three seasons. To get a fourth season, it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, I think it, I think it does come down to casting. I mm -hmm. think. Um, because because the show is so well known, I think it really does come down to that. If you have flat characters, if you have if you have people no one wants to watch, I think it's just going to go away. Yeah. I think it's just going to go away slowly. Now, some countries have two versions of Big Brother. <laughs> one is the well, actually three, mm. four. One is the TV version. Right. One is the internet version. Right. One is the um, <laughs> general version. <laughs> yeah, and one is the adult version. No, I mean, uh, because there are 24, cam 24 you know, hour is, cameras, right? This is right? a very interesting question because a lot has gone on in the house that we weren't able to show. And a lot of people were worried about that. Yeah. You know, are we going to go all the way? Well, you cannot. we can't. So, some some, some monitors are probably even X'd out, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think people who are watching the live feed saw a very different um, show than the people who were um, watching at home because there was there was a lot of sex yeah. solo and otherwise yeah <laughs> yeah no no it was we a lot more show it but show. but but, but this additional may uh, is additional income stream if you would create some sort of membership I'm or whatever. I'm going to come, come talk to my bosses because I completely <laughs> agree. I completely <laughs> agree because you want to be able to watch the one that's on television with your teenage son or teenage, you know, yeah. parents have come up saying, we've, we've had these bonding moments because we watched yeah. your show and we could talk about life through these characters. And I'm like, it's the best thing I've ever heard. But yeah, there are certain people who they want to see it all. Uh, absolutely. All. So, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And have a great time here in ba on Banff. Oh, it's going to be so hard. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow we will have good weather. That's right. Yeah. Eventually. Ja, wir stehen jetzt hier mitten auf dem Media Festival, mitten in dem Gebäude vor dem sogenannten Oak Room. In diesem Raum, da sitzen diverse Medienvertretende um eine große Tafel herum mit einem Stift und einem Block und wollen was lernen. Und zwar Emerging Comedy Models, also wie entwickelt man Comedy, also Spaß und den gewissen Fun-Faktor im Fernsehen. Das Ganze wird unterrichtet von Kevin Bex. Er ist der President of Programming and Production bei Lionsgate. Das heißt also, die anderen Medienschaffenden wollen von ihm nun lernen, wie man Comedy oder auch Spaß im Fernsehen entwickelt. Da gibt er Tipps wie zum Beispiel, dass man nicht nur mit einem Piloten an der ersten Folge pitchen sollte, sondern auch mit einem langen Skript, was dann äh, die weiteren Folgen im Detail beschreibt. So meint er, kommt man also an Aufträge oder auch an den Sender, der das Ganze sendet, letztendlich ran. Und so, so und viele weitere Themen äh, werden hier also noch besprochen und wir schauen mal, was wir noch entdecken. Ja, jetzt haben wir Glück gehabt. Jetzt sind wir auf dem Banff äh, International TV Media... Banff World Media Television Festival. Wie kommt es, dass du das so gut weißt? <lacht> ich bin seit zwei Tagen schon hier. Aber die ändern noch immer den Titel. Ja, keine ja? Ahnung. Letztes Jahr war das anders. Das ist auch dieses Mal Next Media statt Achilles oder Achilles oder wie auch immer. Oh mein Gott. Also das ist übrigens Caroline Kusser und sie ist Senior VP von Red Arrow International. Das habe ich auch richtig gesagt. Absolut richtig. Ja, und du bist der ähm, Red Arrow International, ist eine, eine Firma von Pro7. Eine hundertprozentige Tochter der Pro7 Sat1 Media AG und gehört zur Red Arrow Entertainment Group. Die Red Arrow Entertainment Group ist headquartered sozusagen in Deutschland. Und ist, ich sage immer so, die Umbrella Organization für 18 Produktionsfirmen weltweit. Gibt es denn so eine Art Knowledge Transfer eigentlich auch ja. zwischen 
dass du viel einholst für Deutschland oder eher von, sind die Amerikaner bzw. Kanadier denn interessiert, was machen eigentlich die Deutschen, wie sind die Deutschen dran? Ja, schon. Es hat sich, glaube ich, in den letzten drei Jahren extrem geändert, würde ich sagen, zwei, drei Jahre, dass die Amerikaner sich sehr öffnen, was aus Europa jetzt so reinkommt. Das war ja vorher, hat niemand interessiert. Das hat sich sehr geändert. Es muss nicht mehr nur Produkt sein, was aus England reinkam oder reinkommt. Die Kanadier sind natürlich auch absolut offen, was Europa angeht, Produkt aus Europa. Kanada ist leider immer noch so ein bisschen abhängig von Amerika. Aber das merke ich jetzt auch so seit einem halben, dreiviertel Jahr ungefähr dass Kanada sich auch immer mehr öffnet, um alleine was zu machen, alleine zu gucken, was ist da draußen los in Europa, gibt es ein Format, was für uns als Sendergruppe in Kanada ähm, interessant wäre, ohne dass wir jetzt wieder diesen Big Brother America dran haben. Und du gehst dann auch auf, auf Suche nach bestimmten, machst du das auch nach bestimmten Formaten und guckst dich guckst um, okay, äh, Kanada bietet doch mehr Intellektuelles an als im Vergleich zu, zu den USA? Mm. Kann man nicht so sagen. Ich, kann, ich gehe eher den anderen Weg. Sprich, was ich aus Europa in meinem Portfolio habe, da weiß ich, okay, damit habe ich eine Chance in Kanada, viel höher als ähm, in Amerika. Speziell auf der Scripted-Seite. Hm. Mhm. Auf der anderen Seite, wenn ich Acquisitions technisch loslaufe, gucke ich eigentlich überall. Da kann man nicht so differenzieren. Oh klar, das ist typisch kanadisch, das mhm. ist adaptierbar für Europa. Da kann man nicht wirklich einen großen Unterschied sehen. Welches Projekt war es nun, das hier gewonnen hat? Das war ein Format aus Belgien namens What If, What Else in Flämisch. Es ist eine Comedy-Sketch-Show und das wurde kreiert und produziert von dem gleichen belgischen Produzenten, der auch Benny Dorn Bastards kreiert hat. Mhm. Sagt ihr vielleicht was? Benny Dorn Bastards haben ja. wir, genau, das sind die alten Leute, die junge Leute veräppeln. Ich hasse <lacht> dieses komische Wort veräppeln. Und ähm, das ist ein ganz, ganz kreativer, lustiger Mann und ja, waren echt happy und stolz. Wir haben letztes Jahr schon gewonnen, mhm. den Rocky für Best Comedy und jetzt eben wieder. Letzte Woche oder vor zehn Tagen mittlerweile die Rose Door auch gewonnen mit dem Programm, mit Perfekt. dem Produkt. Und ja, ist für uns natürlich ein internationaler Sales-Erfolg auch. Das haben wir in einige Länder verkauft und wird auch lokal adaptiert. Also wir würden in saloppen Deutsch sagen für A, ja, Punkt, Punkt, Punkt. Getraut, Aber sagen, das ja. wird dann gebiebt, ne? ja, <lacht> deswegen genau. können wir es auch nicht sagen. Genau. Aber das, ja, und äh, das fand ich auch sehr interessant, deswegen haben, das, das habe ich zufällig jetzt in LinkedIn gesehen, da haben sehr viele belgische Mitarbeiter dann wahrscheinlich dir geglückwünscht. Ja. Oder du denen. Absolut, sowohl ja. als auch, aber auch Facebook, die sind ja alle immer social media technisch ganz schnell und ja, sehr so weit. Richtig, ja. ja, ja, absolut. Das war natürlich echt ganz, ganz große Freude und... Es ist ein relativ kleines Produktionsteam, die sehr eng miteinander alle sind. Es ist wie so eine Familie und jetzt erst Rosdorf vor kurzem nach Hause gebracht und jetzt nochmal ein Rocky. Das ist schon echt toll. Klasse. Caroline, vielen Dank und weiterhin viel Spaß hier auf dem äh, Band Festival. Band World Media <lacht> Television. Schön, dass wir uns gesehen haben. Jetzt Danke. <lacht> Danke. Danke. Wir sind tatsächlich zusammen mit Craig Ferguson. Es ist ein Wahnsinn, es ist awesome quasi. Und äh, <lacht> man äh, kennt ihn nicht ganz so gut in Deutschland, aber maybe you introduce yourself for the German audience because you're not broadcasted on German television, are you? I don't think I am. Okay. Shall I What speak I... slowly? <lacht> Does that help? <lacht> Uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Craig Ferguson and I work in American television. All right, and uh, you have the Late Late Show, right? I do, I have the Late Late Show. It's, uh, it's on late at night, very late. But I'm always very nice about the people of Germany and their excellent products. Do you have sometimes German guests in your uh, show? Never. No. What about... <laughs> <laughs> yes, sometimes. <laughs> Not a lot, but sometimes, yes. If you talk to Arnie Arnold Schwarzenegger, I mean, he's, he's Austrian. Austrian. He's Austrian. That's very different. They're completely different things. It's yeah. like Scottish people and Irish people. Uh, yeah, totally different. <laughs> What's the difference? I mean, it's the same language, right? What, yeah, what uh, German and Austrian? Yeah. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Then, great. All right, and uh, so Annie, maybe Till Schweiger. You know Till Schweiger? No, Kraftwerk. I'd love to have Kraftwerk on. Do you know who Kraftwerk are? You're not even German, are you? No. Kraftwerk are the great 
the seminal electronic band started in the 70s. Kra Florian Schneider, Kraftwerk. You don't know about this? Hansa Studios, Berlin? No? What the hell? Have you been to Berlin? No, sadly, no. Well, I'm going there to record my Achtung Baby album, though. <laughs> All right. Have you been to any other city or? I've been to Germany. Yes, I have been to uh, Cologne. Oh yeah. I have been to um, I've been to Bavaria actually. Oh really? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah, I was in uh, Munich. Munich. We yeah. call it München. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> right, and you have won the Sir Peter Ustinov Award. That's right. And uh, he has also a quite German connection, right? But. Uh, I think he was Russian, wasn't he? But he was always on German television, always oh, a guest, I and see. he speaks German. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, Not anymore, was it? Doesn't. You told us in the in uh, the event uh, some minutes ago. You told us that you have met him once. Is it true? Yes. So only for breakfast. Yeah. Well, not for breakfast. He was having breakfast in a place. I was having breakfast, and I said hello. And that's it. Yeah. Or uh, guten Tag. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, so, no, is, isn't a uh, a horn? A horn, which is maple. Oh, like like yeah, like your flag. It's right? not my flag. It's not my. Is it? Yeah, yeah right. You're not Canadian. Yeah. You you told it uh, several times. But I enjoy <laughs> Canada and its excellent products. Oh, it was a nice last word to say. <laughs> Thank you very much for the ich interview. Ich bin ein Berliner. Oh, awesome. Any other thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, off we do Saint Pet, and um, any more German? Dine any more German? Fun, fun, fun of the autobahn. <laughs> Wahnsinn! Ja, das war Craig Ferguson für Sie. Jetzt geht's mit anderen Programmen weiter. Ma'am, uh, what do you think sitting in the second row? Is that a problem for you? <laughs> Not a problem at all. I thoroughly enjoyed the evening. It was a great evening. It's wonderful to have, wonderful to have the Banff Media Festival here in Banff. 34 years. We love this event. And of course, it's always fun for our local residents to uh, see some of the stars that show up at this event. So is it true that uh, the Canadians are so low profile, understatement? <laughs> well, I guess we are. I don't, you know, I don't really know we know we are, but apparently, according to the rest of the world, we are. We're very appreciative of our country and where we live, and we're just happy to be Canadians, and I guess we are pretty humble about it. Now we have to get to Banff, of course. Yes, of course. A and is Banff well visited by... Now we come from Germany, so yes. I have to specifically ask... Yes, no, Germany is a large market for us. We love when the Germans come to visit. Of course, we've had a few tough years, as the entire world has had, in terms of the economy, but we're coming back and we welcome all our European visitors. Uh, it's great when we uh, see our Europeans and German, the German market is very strong both in the winter and the summer. Germans love to ski and they love to uh, come and see our mountains and experience our wildlife and our, our resort.